Okay, we're up on top of an abandoned Basira Siri 280B electric shovel. Now basically what I'm going to do is start up at the top and then take you down through the machine and show you what it's like inside. Now we're up on what's called the gantry right now, which is what you see right here. And the whole purpose of the gantry is to hold up your main boom. And that's what these are right here. These four cables, two on each side, hold up and support your main boom of your shovel. And you have a gantry even on a drag line too to hold up the boom. Now the reason why it has to be cables and not solid is because you need to be able to let on an electric shovel or drag line the boom has to be able to flex when it's working. So that's why they have to be cables and not solid. Now you'll notice that the walkways on these uh, drag lines or shovels like this, they're always open grates. That's just so the water can go through them and doesn't set in, uh, in the winter, create ice or anything. And it's also to give you better traction when you're walking so you don't slip. And this again, this is all the gantry right here. Now we'll take a walk down. Now looking at your main boom right here, the cylinder shaped uh, object you see right there, that's called your crowd. At the end of it is your bucket, which you call your dipper handle. You'll see two lines, two cables on each side of it right there that go right down and wrap around those two sheaths at your pivot point. That is to pull your crowd in and out. Basically when you're cutting into the bank, you want to be able to extend your crowd and then when you pull over to swing over to the truck, you want to be able to pull your crowd in. All that does is pull the bucket in and out away from the machine. The other two lines that you see coming right out from inside the machine go all the way up top to the sheaves which go down and connect to your dipper bucket. And that's basically to raise and lower your bucket to take a bite out of the mountain. Now this is the roof of the uh, 280B right now. Basically all sheet metal, all the drag lines and shovels are like this. And right here is your walkway that you see going up to the top of the boom right up there. Now we'll take a walk around and go inside. Okay. Here's the inside of the 280B. Now it's really all banged up and torn apart in here because the vandals have torn everything apart. But uh, here's one of your swing motors right here. And the other one's right on the other side. This right here in the center, you always have on any drag line or electric shovel. And these are your spool drums right here. And in there, one of the drums is for the hoist on your boom, and the other one is for to work your crowd to pull it in and out. If you look right inside there, you can see the, the big teeth, the jaws on the gears right there that will turn the drums to basically reel the cable in or let it down. Here's another one right in here, basically. One of your that will spin to pull the cable in. Right here on the side, this is one of your air vents right here. Normally that grate would have been covering that, but being that it's old and abandoned, it's just fallen out there. But that would just be able to allow air to flow up in the machine. These two drums you see right here, these are your electric motors, and they're creating all your power to run the machine. The entire machine is all electric, and this is what creates all your electric power right here once the raw power comes in from the main cable. These are your two fans right here, the other one's right over there, and the purpose of these is to blow all the heat outside to keep the inside of this machine cool, being that it's all electrical in here. You know, you don't want it real hot when you're working with all these electronic motors and stuff like this, you want to keep it very cool inside the machine. And these are all your generators and everything to create your power. And here's another one of your drums right in here. Now over here, behind these, these doors right here, that, as you can see they, they have the fences on them, uh, this is where all your electronics, all your circuit breakers are, everything on the machine. And that's why they have, as you can see, the doors over them. Basically, when the machine would be running, you wouldn't want anybody to mess around in here if they didn't know what they were doing because this is all raw power in here, high voltage. And one touch in the wrong spot and you're fried. As you can see, here's more controls and everything for it. And this is your main panel right here for all your breakers and more of them right down there for your crowd, your swing, your oil pump, air pump. And here's your drums right here. 
This one's your hoist right here to basically reel the cable in. You can see the, the lines in the drum and that basically helps when the cable's being reeled in so it finds a place for the cable to line up so the cable doesn't get all tangled up when it's inside the drum. And they make their way out to the boom out there. Here's your other swing motor right here. Now to make your way up to the cab, another electrical panel. This is the inside of the cab on the 280B. As you can see, the windows are all smashed and knocked out. But the controls and everything are still intact. Now, mostly all of these electric shovels are pretty much set up the same way in order to run them. One of these works your hoist, and the other one works your crowd. And they're a very simple machine to run. The foot pedals are for your swing to turn left and right. And these are all for your brakes right here, your compressors. You can see your swing brake right here, your main power right here. Now, and this is also for your heater right here. Now, a big question I get a lot is how do you walk one of these machines? Because as you can see, there is no separate lever to actually walk the tracks. Basically, in order to walk one of these, I'm not sure exactly which oh, it would be the switch right here. This is to work your tracks right here. You would run it off of either your hoist or your drag uh, lever. You basically would flip it over. One, if you flip it over this way like that, now it's in, as you can see where it says, the dig position. So now these, both of these levers will work to dig into a mountain. Swing it over this way to where it says propel. Now one of these levers will now work your tracks so you can actually walk the machine. So you walk the machine off of one of the, the hoist or drag levers. And again, your foot pedal's right there. Now going around the side. The door right here is actually welded shut, so it's really hard to get in and out that way. And here's your big crawlers on the shovel that you can see right here. All individually linked tracks. Right under here you'll see your main brake on the machine. And here's your ring right here and all the rollers that'll swing the shovel when it's working. And right back here is your massive counterweight. Now the bucket capacity on the 280B is 15 yards. As you can see, here's the bucket right here. With the two uh, cables on each side that run right up to the boom to raise and lower it when it's working. And your crowd, as I said right there, to let the bucket come out and to pull it in when it's working. But you rarely see any of these large electric shovels like this anymore, especially these old Bosiris ones. Now up in the oil sands and certain mines like to run the, uh, the newer big P&H's like the 4100's and the, the uh, big Bosiris 495's, uh, especially like some real big strip mines and uh, uh, oil sands especially. But the smaller ones like this, this is mid-size compared to how big these electric shovels will actually get. The problem is hydraulics have completely taken over. So mid-size electric shovels like this one here, or even real small ones like, you know, you have the, the Cyrus 22B, the 100Bs and stuff like that, there's just no market for them anymore. Hydraulics have taken over, and that's why a lot of these uh, cable shovels like you see here are just parked on the side. But there she is, a Bosiris Erie 280B, one of the last ones around. And it's really sad because there used to be two Marion 191Ms parked with this machine here and both of them were sadly cut up uh, and probably down the line this one will end up in the same fate too.